a metal membrane for hydrogen separation. Will we have a hydrogen renaissance? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to have a look at an article from CSIRO. But before we get to that, uh, yesterday I did a video on my Heiser Says US channel. If you haven't subscribed, please check it out. It's where I focus on, well, US news or articles. And one was hydrogen to take 25% of oil demand. And in it, one of the concerns I had was the embodied energy in the production of hydrogen. We've all done the science experiment where we run electricity through water to separate oxygen and hydrogen. And there are other industrial methods to produce it that are quite well, energy intensive. So, and the problem I had with it, while hydrogen is a fantastic, well, it's, it's the best. It's number one, the number one element. <laughs> anyway, sorry, um, couldn't help myself is if you spend more energy uh, to produce it than you can to um, than you get from the consumption of it it's kind of going to be a net negative and the transportation of it has always been a big issue a big issue but a viewer sent me or told me to look up some information from the CSIRO about some well exciting new technology so now I'm thinking how can we invest in this everyone because this has got me quite excited so a metal membrane for hydrogen separation now, and also, which foreign country do you think is going to develop this first, other than Australia? So, we've developed a metal membrane to extract pure hydrogen from ammonia, paving the way for a new export market. Now, that's just crazy. Ammonia is, well, you can, uh, sure, it, it's dangerous if you breathe in too much. 300 parts per, per million, I think, is deadly or can cause damage. But I, I'm used to ammonia. Maybe that's why I'm bald. My father had an ammonia printer you know an old school when you draft on the drawing board you do it on trace paper then you'd run it through um, a machine and it was impregnated paper and that's how you'd make prints how you'd make blueprints or copies so the house used to always stink of ammonia everywhere whenever it was being used so the challenge transporting the fuel of the future the growing global demand for clean hydrogen fuel represents a significant opportunity for the establishment of an Australian renewable hydrogen export industry. Hydrogen could one day power vehicles and industry around the world, but due to its low density and, its, and it is notoriously difficult to transport. Our response, ammonia as the carrier. One way to overcome limitations or overcoming limitations is to convert hydrogen to ammonia, piggybacking existing transport infrastructure the financial and uh, technical barriers of to use ammonia as a hydrogen carrier are low. CSIRO's research addresses the conversion of ammonia back to high purity hydrogen at or near the point of use. Membranes are a thin layer of metal which allow hydrogen to pass while blocking all other gases. By coupling mem membranes with a suitable catalyst for ammonia decomposition, we can effectively extract pure hydrogen from ammonia. Now that, that is really, that's a game changer for this transportation of hydrogen, I'd say. Being able to transport it in a truck safely as a liquid, as ammonia, or as a gas. So the results, two years, a two year research project. Through this two-year project, we will develop and demonstrate a hydrogen production system incorporating CSIRO-developed membrane technology to deliver at least 5 kilograms per day of hydrogen directly from ammonia. The research has also been welcomed by industry and is supported by the BOC, Hyundai, Toyota, and Renewable Hydrogen Proprietary Limited. The research is supported by the Science and Industry Endowment Fund. So if we have a look here, this is the fund. Spanning a history of over 85 years, the Science and Industry Endowment Fund provides grants to science and scientists with the purpose of assisting Australian industry, furthering the interests of the Australian community, and contributing to the achievement of Australian national objectives. In 2009, this unique and esteemed fund arrangement received a substantial gift from the CFI CSIRO facilitating the rejuvenated fund to be a mechanism for significant support of science in Australia. 
So if we have a look here, here's another article. Australian team makes green ammonia production breakthrough. So Australian researchers may have unlocked the secrets to producing or to, to the production of zero emissions and environmentally friendly ammonia production, a key breakthrough that could massively expand the potential for green hydrogen exports. A new research published in the Journal of Energy and Environmental Science, researchers from UNSW Sydney and University of Sydney had developed a new method that allows for the production of hydrogen without the need for the production of high temperatures, high pressures, and only requires air, water, and renewable electricity as inputs. Be great if that renewable electricity was just coming from good old nuclear or, you know, gas turbines. Ammonia has long been a key input into agricultural production, and when used as a fertilizer, it can significantly expand crop yields. And more recently, ammonia has emerged as a potential candidate for the transport of hydrogen for use in the energy sector, acting as an ideal vehicle for safely storing and transporting hydrogen for export. Researchers say that the innovative approach to the production of ammonia is more environmentally friendly than most methods currently used by industry and could eliminate the use of fossil fuels in the process. The way that we did it does not rely on fossil fuel resources nor emit CO2, co-author of the paper, Dr. Emma Lovell from UNSW, Chief of Chemical Engineering said. And once it becomes available commercially, the technology could be used to produce ammonia directly on site and on demand. Farmers could even do this on location using our technology to make fertilizer, which means we negate the need for storage and transportation. As we saw tragically in Beirut recently, how potentially dangerous storing ammonium nitride can be. So if we can make it locally, to use locally, and make it as we need it, then there's a huge benefit to society as well as the health of the planet, Dr. Lovell added. Details of the new method, which have been successfully demonstrated in lab conditions, with the researchers stressing that more work is required before the method is ready for commercialization, but added that it shows promise as a way of cutting global greenhouse gas emissions. The current way we make ammonia by the Heiber-Bosch method produces more CO2 than any other chemical making reaction, the doctor said. In fact, making ammonia consumes about 2% of the world's energy and makes 1% of its CO2, which is a huge amount if you think of all the industrial processes that occur around the world. Ammonia consists of three hydrogen atoms bounded to an atom of nitrogen, with each of these components readily found in water and air respectively. However, scientists have found it difficult to synthesize ammonia without the need for producing very high temperatures and pressures that require the use of fossil fuels. So is this like the ammonia version of cold fusion? Let's hope it actually turns into something real. However, the Australian researchers have successfully demonstrated a process for producing ammonia using a plasma. They can, oh, wait a minute. Okay, th they're still going to require a lot of energy. So if you're just doing it using renewable energy, that doesn't mean you're not using... That, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Using the plasma, the scientists were able to create intermediaries in the form of uh, nitrous oxides, which could then be converted into ammonia through well-understood methods. Working with our University of Sydney colleagues, we designed a range of scalable plasma reactors that could generate nitrous oxide intermediaries at a significant rate and high energy efficiencies. I guess, I mean, if, if you're not, you know, if it's more efficient. Once we generated the intermediary in water, Designing a selective catalyst and scaling the system became significantly easier. The breakthrough of our technology was in the design of the high-performance plasma reactors coupled with electrochemistry. The research team said that the new process could unlock new ways of safely and efficiently exporting green hydrogen into the global market. Hydrogen is very light, so you need a lot of space to store it. Otherwise, you have to compress or liquefy it. Co-author of the ARC Training Center for Global Hydrogen Economy Science Sciencia Professor Rose Amal, Amal said, but liquid ammonia, ammonia actually stores more hydrogen than liquid hydrogen itself. And so there has been increasing interest in the use of ammonia as a potential energy vector for a carbon-free economy. We can use electrons. It's, it's not a carbon-free economy. It's never going to be a carbon-free economy. It's going to be a, well, reduced carbon economy. If you're not producing it using renewable energies, then it's not green carbon. And the renewable energies also, 
infrastructure also has an embodied energy. This is the thing. People call stuff green if you just hook it up to solar panels. They ignore the fact that there's all this embodied energy in the production of that infrastructure. We can use electrons from solar farm. There you go. To make ammonia and then sport, export our sunshine as ammonia rather than hydrogen. Or we can export our sunshine as timber. We do that too. That's a renewable resource. You know what's another renewable resource? Leather. Let's export that. And when it gets to countries like Japan and Germany, they can either split the ammonia and convert it back into hydrogen and nitrogen or use it as fuel, he added. Well, so there we have you know, a look at this new technology. We'll have to see. I mean, what competitive advantage does Australia have? You know, I'm sure if the CSIRO has the technology, they'll just license it out to other countries, won't they? Or other intelligence organizations can take it. We'll have to see. Do we really have a competitive advantage in this? If you can produce ammonia here, you can produce it anywhere in the world. Then you can produce hydrogen. You, if you're shipping from Australia, guys, there's all the embodied energy as well of shipping the hydrogen all over the world. Why would you why would you ship hydrogen from Australia to Germany when you could just produce it in Germany? Well, hang on. I'll bring that up. You're not seeing what I'm looking at. So why would you ship it from Australia to Germany with all that embodied energy in the diesel burned in the ship when you could just set up a factory in Germany or anywhere around the world? Isn't that the end goal? I mean, fantastic. This this has potential for an export market, maybe an international inter well an um, IP, an intellectual property export. We'll have to see if it if it you know if we can keep our capacity. So these are the in development hydrogen production projects and potential areas and these are transmission lines what do you reckon guys and how would you invest to take advantage of it so there we have it some ex interesting developments at least coming from the csiro and some potential for hydrogen could you one day see us filling up our cars with ammonia as always, guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can support us using our affiliate links. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or just share and comment on the content. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I will see you all next time. Bye for now.